Oh, right. Yeah. Finish this off all. And to be honest, this has become more personal now. But we just did the Opie and Anthony where they're basically all just ripping each other. But it ain't like this. This got very, like, personal and, a, like, yeah. Whereas Opie and Anthony's vicious. But it ain't quite like, do you know what I mean, where you're literally attacking people for, like, their deepest, darkest things or whatever. But anyway, yeah, let's go. You, your best thinking got you here. You've heard that before. <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, well that's, that's depressing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Listen, I'm not even, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people on the phone who want to chime in. I'm not even going to let them. No. But look, uh, I don't care. I'm telling you, I, 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 I wasn't going to say anything until July because I it's not it's not in my head uh, uh, my, made up, and uh, I do have that guy's number actually. Good. I, I hope you call. That's it. Let's leave it at that. You know, I can't do anything about you missing the Yankees Red Sox game, and I understand no, that. No, that's just like a symbol in my head. I'm right. going like, well, you know, I spend a lot of money on these tickets, and I can't even go to a fucking game. That's right. It like plays jokes on you, and like, oh, what, what is it? is it? Is it worth it if that I, is the work worth it if I can't enjoy the things I enjoy? And then you know, you start thinking, well, you know what's funny? How do I get out of this rut? I used to think that at NBC, right? And then once I even got fired, I had clarity. I went. Why did I get so fucking worked up? I could have easily done this. And it's weird. Easily done what? Worked within their parameters? No. Or? I, could have, I could have figured out how to make it more enjoyable while I was there. Right. I don't think I, I, don't think I could have avoided being fired. That mm -hmm. would have happened inevitably. But I didn't need to have all the angst and the fuck it. Like, just fuck right. it. I'm, I'm filled, yeah, with, filled angst. with it. filled with it. And I think that angst doesn't go away just because you have the chain. It's a change of scenery. Even if you quit working and you put yourself on a farm. Right. You know, I mean, uh, you, there's been... So, th that Larry Sanders show had a great episode. Larry figured if he went to Montana and retired, right. he'd be happy. Right. He lasted three weeks. <laughs> I know, I know. I, I love that yeah. episode. I get it. I know. Yeah. But anyway, listen. You'll come to the right conclusion. Either way, and you have the full support of me. No, I know. No matter I, what you decide to do. If and look, it's nobody January, springs then, something on me. I knew right. the schedule of getting into this, and it was a blast. And right. I just slowly but surely uh, <laughs> fell into this black hole of shit health, and I'm... I, I woke up one day, I'm 300 <coughs> pounds, I can barely move, and mentally I'm a mess. It didn't happen in one day. Yeah, I know. I, I, and Art, <laughs> you know what? I'll suggest to you this. If you, if you separate yourself out, you're on satellite radio, we're having a blast, you're doing your thing. Uh, creatively, uh, it's, yeah. it's great. So, and, that's but, the, but you got to see, that's the only thread that keeps me from madness. The fact that I can go home and go, you know what? We, I was funny today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I earned my paycheck. The show is funny or whatever the fuck. But it know. could be that you decide, and rightly so, by the way. It's your decision. January comes around, you give me some notice, let me know, and, and we'll have a good farewell party, and that'll be it. See, that's why the and scary... And I will miss you. You see, that's why it's scary to me to leave this to go to some other creative venture, because God forbid... Um, You're miserable. I don't have the creative satisfaction, and right. it's all this shit. Uh, that's what I was going through for a while. At Mad TV, there were good sketches, but there were bad ones, man. And the week where I hated the sketch, man, that was like, now I have nothing to fall back on. Now there's no redeeming quality about the situation. Right. I don't think I'm being funny. I'm miserable where I am. Like At least here, I go home and I go, I, you know, I'm part of something special. It's unique, and it was funny. And, you know, and I can argue be, in my head that now that's what makes me go on. You've always been a guy who's not afraid to take chances. You left the dock, and you went out in show business, and you will do well even outside of this show. I know you will. You've got talent. Maybe money-wise, but um, not uh, not creative. Money-wise, and I think I you'll mean, find it's hard to get this atmosphere anywhere in comedy. You can't do it, you know. But you, you know, you make your decision, and you decide. But I'm just talking about your happiness. That ain't right. going to change. I don't give a fuck what venue you're in. I don't care if you're working in a deli or if you're working or if you just stop working and sit You'll home. You'll still be arty. You're still going to be arty. You know what happened to me? I got spoiled, too. For two years, I had the exact opposite situation I'm in now, and I was the healthiest physically of my life. I didn't like the show I was doing. I thought Korea, I would watch it every, you know, the Norm show. For two fucking years, I was making 35 grand a week. I had a convertible, I had a tan. I'd get up at 11, you know, I'd throw you guys on. I'd go over Mulholland Drive. I'd have an omelet. I'd go to work. I'd read the shit script. We'd tape it, get a paycheck, <laughs> go to a party, maybe have sex with a broad that's out of my league. And the show would come on, and my aunts would love it because they're hearing fake laughter and Artie's getting laughs. But creatively, I, it was empty. 
and right. normals normals say the same thing. He 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 lost his way with that because it wasn't as funny as a stand up and all this other shit. Here it's the direct opposite. Here it's the funniest thing ever, and I'm proud of the work. But my God, the schedule with the stand up is. And look, I the other thing is if I do stay. I got to bite the bullet financially a little bit and at least cut the stand up in half like directly boom because that's I that's that's killing me the traveling and the fucking getting back on a Sunday getting off the plane and yeah, I can't do that anymore no, you know and I'm going to be 40 that's the other soul searching thing like in October I'll be 40 and that you know for some reason 30 didn't bother me 35 40's fucking with my head a little bit right. and uh, I understand it's a lot of shit going on and uh, you know the norm show I look good <laughs> but I wasn't being funny. Here I look like shit, but I'm getting laughs. Well, maybe you can it's do a, both. Maybe you can get laughs and uh, look good. I miss that. That sitcom lifestyle is hard. It, you, you miss it. But, I know. You this know. is not an easy lifestyle. This is not. So we'll see what happens. Listen, but, but I say while you're in this much pain and worried about your health. Right. I'm just saying maybe therapy. I don't know. Maybe there's some other answer. Yeah, maybe you start now right. so that you really are clear in January what you want to do. And, but I promise you guys, and this is a testament to all of you, the only thing that keeps me from total madness is the fact that I'm part of a show that is great. It's a great, legendary yeah. show, and that makes me sane, and it right. gets me to sleep. If I didn't have so that, definitely forget, leave it. Uh, well, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Like you it's, it's going to be great if I drop dead, Robin. I don't want. You know what am I going to do? But you, uh, and if you again. decide to work in a deli, uh, please no mayo on my sandwich. Yeah, I was going to say, let too. us know. Yeah. We'll come. It'll be a great deli. Right. And if I ask for extra butter, not don't let it swim in butter. <laughs> I'm not going to be working anywhere uh, near food. I got to take a break. You need. Wow, a break. I'm leaving. I can't what? take this show today. Yeah. It's been too emotional. Too much has gone on. Well, how about a little uh, excerpt from the letter? Whenever I fantasize about fat men... <laughs> is that what it says? They're usually Italian, and the majority of my boyfriends have been Italian. Unfortunately, only one has gained weight, and it wasn't for me or my fetish. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, don't Keep you think reading. when a chick says Keep she reading. has a fetish... Who that cares? Is... You're getting laid. <laughs> yeah, this is you're making it sound like I'm I don't know. I'm anyway. nuts. I, you know, if someone had a fetish for big nose pelicans, as you say, I'd be happy to fuck it. her. I live uh, with my dad, and I kind of take care of him. He thinks we're pretty similar, and uh, uh, we drink, her and her dad, I guess, a lot is in capitalization. Okay. <laughs> She's trying to sell herself. And I usually drink and get crazy. I get stopped by people all the time telling me how much I look like Lindsay Lohan, and actually I've been mistaken for her a few times, but I drink more and get into more trouble than she does. Uh-oh. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan without the money. Sorry, I thought it was kismet. I think if <laughs> uh, I think if Artie and I get uh, went out once that he, we'd hit it off. I like to cook. He likes to eat. I get off on it. Well, then we'll drink until we. Then we'll drink until we need. If that's the girl from the last bit that they've been rowing about, she looked nothing like Lindsay Lohan. I looked her picture up. She looks more like a kind of Snow White. Cartoon. He wheeled back to our hotel room. Yeah. <laughs> now, now tell me what's bad about it. Again, if this sounds She's like a perfect if this sounds, sounds like, like punishment. A party. I don't know. I thought the girl might be fun. I don't know. She says she has. A, I don't want to be known that I can only get fucked by chicks who have fetishes. The it, fetish. No one knows that. Who this said is just that? one chick who wanted you. Sorry. I have a really hard time finding a decent boyfriend that won't lie to me and will do my fat fetish in bed. I have this fetish where I'm immensely aroused by fat men. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, she is. But what if I'm trying to lose weight? It would be uh, like a, you know. Look, dude, so you're not going to marry her. her at a certain point. Right, I mean, she's looking for a good time. She <laughs> drinks and wants to fuck. I I'm, don't know. I'm 20, and I'm working as a stripper for culinary school. Uh, all right, well, all right. Uh, I, you know. I mean, the fetish. Sorry. Man, yeah, sorry you're a fetish. Believe me, I'm a fetish, too. Oh, what fetish are you? A pelican. You yeah, told me this morning <laughs> when you were, no when you were berating me no for, for, because I'm an evil person. All right, look. From one evil person to another. <laughs> Just calm down over there. Uh, this has been one of those days. I man. really want to go home. I'm sick of this whole day. This has been one of those days. Awful day. What is it, Sonny? Hey, bro. Uh, 
uh, yeah, don't go anywhere, Robin. This is the best fucking show you, you've probably <laughs> ever done. Um, and, and I just, this is, is so great. And uh, Doug, please, I, I don't want to see fucking Joe Piscopo for The Daily Show. I want to see Howard and, and, and Artie killing each other. <laughs> You'll see. Uh, I got teary-eyed this morning. Artie, Artie just got teary-eyed. I'm telling you, when I'm Artie very, told me I'm I wasn't very, his bro, well I, I really, it really hit me. I know. He I did not tell. get teary-eyed. Oh, no, I did. he was hurt. Oh, I, I was know hurt. Howard. You, you, pu- you punched me him. hard today. That Can I ask him. one thing, Artie? Um, mm-hmm. You know, you've sort of... And Gary, line up David Tell, please, on oh. the phone. <laughs> and Greg Fitzsimmons. That's the other thing. There's a hundred guys no. that... I, my I time is over here. Artie, Artie. I've told every story <laughs> I got. Excuse me. I've done, every, I've done every impression I have. Oh, yeah. Excuse me. Let me just say this. I remember when we were just the having people sit over there in that chair. Right. And we all came together at one point, and it was like, it's so much fun when Artie's here. That's right. So, Those um, days are gone. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, please make sure Bob Levy doesn't bother me <laughs> after this. We're going away for a month. Poor Artie, Bob. We love you, Bob. Why don't we take bets right now? Yeah. Who's going to be – Artie said he's leaving, but he hasn't decided for sure. Somebody's going to fucking call me, for real. Who's Bob the Levy. first person to call? First person is Bob Levy. Jackie! No. Hey. It would come full hey. circle. I want to find me. Wouldn't it be amazing oh. if you finished out your career with Jackie right here? Oh, no, I no, won't be no, here. I'll circle. quit with you, Artie. No, I'm, I'm sorry. not taking that anymore. Oh. <laughs> I had enough of that. Artie. I just killed Shaylee. I saw him running in the door. Get away. Ron Zimmerman. Fuck you. It's my door. Get away. Artie sucks. <laughs> Ron Zimmerman. <laughs> please, please. Please, 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 everybody, just calm down. I see a window of opportunity. Oh, I hated the schedule too. I wrong. I love it now. I want to get up early. Please. Artie can't please. take the schedule. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's it. It's, see, it's the stand-up. The stand-up's what fucks you. Hey, hey, I gotta hey. get rid of that. No stand-up for me. I hate it. Hey, hey, I'm hey, down hey, to $50 hey, a gig. Uh, I'm working bachelor parties. Oh, oh, this is the last my Christmas. I can't, you're my Bro, you can call me bro. I'm your bro. That's the other thing. It's such a it's such a high being the comic on the show and doing three thousand seaters. Like to, to go to go no, back to not. opening for no. a guy at the funny bro. Artie, Artie, I'm still doing three thousand seaters. Don't worry about it. You'll be fine. Please, 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 please. You'll, you'll be fine. We're gonna come back. I love it. Artie. I was going insane. I was like, now I'm on the beach. I'm so happy. Oh, I'm a different man. I'm gonna be a good friend. I'm gonna be a good doctor. Oh, I'm so skinny. Oh, oh, I got a metal detector. I don't, I don't Maybe I should talk to Jack. I got a, I got a metal detector. No, no, no. I, I, I found a can. <laughs> I found a can from 1942. It's an old Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> My wife loves me. It's great. Oh. So at the end. Well, yeah, I have to say the Artie opening up like that is a bit like, I listen to a lot of kind of people that have had hard lives, like tough, like ex, ex criminal, ex UK hard men, basically, that like, do you know what I mean, are tough, tough men. And they would struggle to. They I I hit listen to podcasts of them, and they struggle uh, opening up and making themselves look vulnerable. And f- I don't know when this actually was, um, but to be that like so open and so like art, he really is. And that's something I've noticed. Like like I say with Mike Bichetti, that he's so ruthless with Mike Bichetti, but then he also says the same things about himself. Like he's honest. He's honest about himself. He's be like he's a bit like too honest, and he, I think he's a bit too hard. Um. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. To be fair, when he read that email, that was. Like, as it went on and on, it just got worse. Like, I, that that was offensive. Like, it was offensive. It's kind of like... Having someone say, this is the perfect girl for you, is like... 
basically because she mirrors all of your bad, all the bad shit about you. Like, yeah. And she likes fat people. Like, I, yeah, I can see why Artie kind of... But also, at the same time, the bit worked perfectly. Like, you, that's something, again, I've noticed with Opie and Anthony, that typically what they plan to happen isn't the thing that happens. If there's some kind of something that sparks, that becomes the thing. Like, especially if it's tension. Like, there's nothing better, there's nothing more gripping than hearing people talk openly and honestly and heatedly as well. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Yeah, no, I thought this was this was good. But like I say, it's very different to Opie and I mean, Opie and Avery, they do say some personal things. Like, and they do say some really hurtful things. But there is more of a... It's, it is... F- like it does feel more like a friend friendship group, whereas this got very kind of personal and vicious, quick, like and and also not really funny. Like it's you're not taking something and making a joke out of it. You're just literally using it as an insult. Like you're using it to be vicious instead of making a joke based on that thing yeah but yeah yeah it was like i say it, it depends what way you look at it when you say the bit went wrong or the bit went incredibly well that like if if that was i mean to be fair hearing that and hearing them say it's gone wrong really actually has made me kind of respect op a bit because op one thing that op did do well is understand a situation and how to provoke it to make entertaining radio he he he's a master at that yeah so like if if in opie's head this would have been the perfect bit this like tension and yeah because there is nothing more gripping it's the same reason why fighting <clears throat> is so f- interesting to watch it's like a yeah because there's nothing more, there's not, a, well, it's not even, you can't even call it a sport. Like, I love MMA because there's an honesty to MMA. Anyway, I'm waffling now. But yeah, that's the reaction. Sweet.